Hello everyone and welcome to another Flutter Mentor video. Today we're going to get a little bit more advanced. We're going to learn how to create a stopwatch. And I wanted this to be a quick video, so I decided to use an external package. However, it is a great package. We'll get to that in a second. For now, let's check out the UI. Basically, over here will be the stopwatch, then the buttons are over here. And once we use the lap button, the lap timestamps will show up underneath everything. Right now it's all super simple. It's just text widgets and a row and just the text widgets. And then there is a custom button class here which is a stateless widget that I created to make everything simpler otherwise there would be way too many raised buttons for anybody to understand anything but let's get to it first go to pub.dev type in stopwatch press enter it's the first find stopwatch timer as you can see popularity 91 percent 30 likes and 110 pub points which is the maximum possible i will leave the link in the description below and i advise you to read the documentation so you can figure out everything that you can do with this package but we're going to focus on just creating a regular stopwatch and the first step is to install the dependency in our pubspec.yaml file you can click the video suggestion on the top right if you don't know how this file works and once you've hit pub get you can come back here let's get dependencies and let's import the package as simple as that and if you want to export a package you can just come here and they have an example that pretty much shows everything the package can do but like i said we're going to focus on creating a simple stopwatch the first thing you need to do is initialize the class let's call it stopwatch timer and obviously it's a stopwatch timer class after this, I'm going to initialize a bool. I'm going to call it is hours because our timestamp will show hours, which is the maximum that you can count with this stopwatch. You can't count days. That doesn't come with the package, but I don't really know many stopwatches that count days, so I think you'll be fine. Something that you should not forget is the dispose method for the object you just created. Please don't disregard the importance of disposing anything that can consume your device's processing power. And now let's get the stopwatch in our UI. Let's get rid of the text completely. And instead we're going to use a stream builder. Now, what does this builder take? If you press control Q, you'll see that the builder expects a function with a build context and an async snapshot as their arguments. So let's do that. For now, let's just return a text widget because first we need to come here and create a variable to get the snapshot data. And we do this by simply typing in snapshot.data. And don't get confused, this snapshot refers to this, which is an async snapshot. And something very important, you need to define the data type of the stream builder, which in this case is an int. And we also need a variable for the display time, which you get by accessing this property, get display time. This expects a value, which we already called it like that. And then you specify the kind of stopwatch you want. In this case, we want one that displays hours. So we use the bool that we created earlier is hours, which is true. Hopefully this next part doesn't confuse you, but we need to define the stream by using the object that we created dot raw time. And then we need to provide the stream builder with an initial data, which will be also using our objects dot raw time dot value. Now, in our text widget, we give it the display time. And let's quickly style this. And there it is. We officially have a stopwatch right there. However, we can't make it work yet. So let's add in the buttons. Like I said before, I created a special class for this. It's basically just a raised button with a stadium border as a shape and white colored text. And then what changes is the content of the text, the unpressed and the color. So let's get to it. Forget the start button text and let's put in a custom button. The color will be green, the label will be start, and the unpressed needs to be specific to the package now because we're going to access our object and use the on execute option here, dot add. And as the stopwatch execute data, we're going to type in stopwatch execute dot start. And this is pretty much it. If I save this, you will see a green button and it technically already works, as you can see. However, we have no way to stop it. So let's just restart the app and make ourselves a stop button. This time I'll just copy this one to save me some trouble. I'll make it red instead stop instead of start and the only thing i'm changing here is the same just stop instead of start and now if i say this it already works in the most basic possible way a stopwatch can work you start and you stop and you start and you stop let's get to the next two buttons now the lap button changes to lap i'm gonna use the custom color here and here you guessed it it's lap now let's quickly do the same for the reset button go reset make it black and once again you guessed it all it changes is this if we save, here it is. We can start, we can stop, we can reset, 
we can do everything we can even do the lap but there's nothing showing us the laps so let's take care of that now hit reset let's go now the lap will honestly be the most complicated part of this tutorial but just follow along and you'll understand how it works first thing i'm going to do is create a scroll controller and this is just to display the lap times in a decent way oh and do not forget to dispose the scroll controller as well let's get rid of this text child and we're going to use another stream builder right here and the data type is this one right here a list which has a data type of stopwatch record which is obviously specific to the package so the first thing we're going to do is give it a stream again using our object but dot records and the same for initial data which as you can see expects a list which is simply stopwatch timer dot records dot value much like we did before now we do the builder again context and snapshot once again let's create a variable for the snap data and let's make sure nothing shows up if there are no laps to show. In this case, we would return an empty container, which can't really be seen in the UI. Now let's return a list view builder so we get rid of those squiggly lines. Let's not forget to give it a controller, which is the one we just created. And the item builder works similar to the stream builder's builder. Context and index, which is an int. Let's just return a column for now. Let's get the data from the value using the index. Remember that we're still talking about a list. Let's put in here a text widget, but uh, actually let's give it some padding. Oh, and oops, I forgot to put this in the children. My bad on that. And here we're going to type in the number of the lap record. So we're gonna use index plus one, because as you know, indexes always start at zero. And then next to this, we're going to say the actual lap time, simply by typing data, dot display time let's give it some styling let's save and obviously we can't see anything because the list of laps is empty oh and very quickly let me just add a quick divider here just to make sure the laps are well separated from each other now how do we go about the scrolling it's easier if i just do this basically what we do here is use this property here max scroll extent to make sure the display accompanies the last entry of the list view everything else is just animation details so now if i save or in this case restart everything should wait i forgot something very important this is a list view builder never forget to add an item count otherwise the list view builder will not be working properly in this case the list we're using comes from the value so I'll just say value.length and now finally we have a working stopwatch let me show you we can start we can stop we can start again we can stop we can reset while it stopped, we can reset while it started, and we can even record our laps, like so. And once it goes over four, you will see the animation right there. That's a smooth animation, and then right here, this max scroll extent, make sure that the display always follows the last entry of the list view. So this was a success. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something today. If you did, do not forget to leave me a like and subscribe if you want to learn more about Flutter. Without anything else to add, this is Flutter Mentor, and out.